in OpenGL Mathematics Library, GLM, we have a function named perspective, which allows us to construct the perspective projection matrix. So, not surprisingly, the name of the function is called perspective, and what it takes is the field of view, right? So, this angle is the field of view right here. Of course, if we want to use degrees, we have to convert them to radians. And also, we have location of the near plane, right? So, the location of the near plane is specified right here. I'm using really small unit here. 0.1 and location of the far plane in my case I specify as 1000 units away from the camera. We also have part of this is the aspect defined by the screen width and height essentially width divided by height. The perspective GLM function requires additional header and it is called matrix transform.hpp. So let's build and quickly run this code. So this is my projection matrix that is constructed with 60 degree field of view and these parameters for the location of the near plane and the far plane. So this is my perspective matrix that I constructed. Another type of projection in OpenGL is called orthographic projection and it's typically used in CAD design, computer-aided design applications. And here basically projection is just a, a box. It doesn't produce a perspective impression. So the size of the viewing volume really does not change the proportions of the object that we originally model. So these are coordinate systems of the eye space and the viewing volume showing the actual coordinates of the viewing volume right here, orientation of all axes. And when the projection matrix is applied, this is actually achieved by using homogeneous clip coordinates, which include the extra component called W. And at this stage, we're dividing our XYZ coordinates by that component in order to fit everything into the viewing volume. The next slide provides summary regarding Fruston clipping, which makes entire objects or parts of our objects removed and discarded from the view. The next stage is normalized device space or normalized device coordinates. And this is achieved by dividing XYZ coordinates of our objects by the W component and then setting W component to 1. The Z coordinates are also translated into the range from 0 to 1. So this is a summary of normalized device coordinate transformation. And it happens internally in the hardware. In this graphic, we're showing this grid, which is the ZX plane, this square demonstrates the same ZX plane, but already translated into the view volume. So this is our projection transformation right here. And so finally, this internally translates into everything fitting into this normalized device coordinate space. And here you see that this grayed area becomes this volume. And of course, our shapes become of these realistic proportions as a result of this transformation, just like railroad tracks we've seen at the beginning of our series, as well as parts of what we see are being clipped away. So parts like these outside of the volume of viewing are clipped away. And the remaining z-coordinates of our objects here are basically flipped into positive z range from 0 to 1. So finally, the normalized device coordinate space is projected into a window or screen, and positions of vertices are adjusted in proportion to the window of the computer screen, so the final image can be rendered. 
So here we've completed a review of OpenGL pipeline transforming uh, original vertex data or object coordinates to the I coordinates by applying the model view matrix. Then projection matrix takes us from the I coordinates into the clip coordinates or the viewing volume. Then division by W and that manipulation with the positive Z axis coordinates transforms us into normalized device space. And finally, we are ready to show the window coordinates, the actual coordinates of the pixels on the screen. And a quick reminder that the model view matrix is a matrix that combines all necessary translations, scaling and rotations of our objects necessary to place them in the world space.